Uh, we've also um, made progress on hitting the terrorists where it, where it hurts, making it harder for them to travel, to train, to finance themselves, to acquire the weapons and explosives that they are looking for. Uh, we've agreed a deal on, on firearms. Uh, it's not perfect, uh, but it will remove the most dangerous military-grade weapons from wider circulation where uh, they have no need to be. And we've agreed uh, on the counterterrorism directive. Travel to and from combat zones, training for the purpose of fighting and the financing of such activities will now be criminalized across the whole of the EU. And we strengthen our action on financing with today's proposal on the criminalization of money laundering. Today, as things stand, countries across the EU have different ways of criminalizing money laundering. And as a result, the judicial and law enforcement authorities uh, can face real difficulties in dealing with the more complex money laundering cases, which often have a cross-border uh, dimension. Indeed, the number of money laundering criminal investigations involving several EU countries is between 10 and 70 percent, depending on which EU member state you're talking about. The end result is that criminals, and sometimes terrorists, don't end up where they should, which is in custody and behind bars. Again, making it harder for criminals and terrorists to finance themselves is an effective way of disrupting planning for attacks. So we're taking the opportunity of implementing our international obligations to harmonize our approach to the criminalization of money laundering uh, across uh, the EU, both in terms of the definitions that are used and sanctions. And this will make it easier and more effective to pursue cases both within EU member states and between EU member states. More generally, on top of making it harder for criminals and terrorists to finance themselves, following the money can be extremely effective for tracking down criminals and terrorists and their contacts and accomplices. After the Paris and Brussels attacks, in the context of Operation Fraternité, the EU-US terrorist finance tracking program provided over 800 such leads. When the Commission presented its action plan to counter terrorism financing back in February of this year, uh, we agreed to look further at the EU-US um, tracking program and whether a complementary EU system uh, might be necessary. Uh, in 2013, when this issue was last looked at, uh, it was concluded that th there wasn't a case for a complementary EU system. But since then, uh, quite a few things have changed. The terrorist threat itself has changed and changed in nature. Uh, but also the way terrorists finance themselves has changed. And uh, there have been enormous technological advances in the area of payments. So there are lots of new ways of transferring money and not all of those are covered by uh, the existing EU-US scheme. On that basis, uh, we're committing in today's Security Union report to consider the options further, uh, do an appropriate study, and report back by next summer. Taken together, all these measures that we've been discussing uh, this morning, uh, once agreed and fully implemented, squeeze the space in which criminals and terrorists can operate. They don't eliminate all risk, but they do make us more resilient and better able to counter and deal with attacks if and when they take place.